Hey everyone, Jason here with STS. I'm going to be working on an iPhone 6 that was sent here for no backlight. I think it's no backlight. When is it actually like exactly what it was supposed to be? Like when you bring something in with a prior repair attempt and it is just like exactly the way they described it? When does that ever happen? Well, let's find out. Let's see if it's happening now. All right. So we have a job number here. I'm going to stick one of our stickers on it. I think I say it every time I make a video. One day I'm going to update our system to print these little stickers. I will. Not today. <laughs> Too busy. All right, let's go ahead and pop this phone open. Let's see if we can make sure that this is actually a backlight problem. Well, at least it is an iPhone 6 and not a 6 Plus. If it was an iPhone 6 Plus, a backlight problem to me would mean backlight plus touch disease. Or if it was an iPhone 6 Plus and it was like problem charging battery or broken battery connector, I'd say battery connector plus touch, dis <laughs> touch disease. No matter what it is with the 6 Plus, I'll take whatever tool damage it is plus touch disease because the tool damage happened while somebody was beating their head against the wall trying to cure touch disease. That's one thing being about being a uh, about being a micro soldering board repair shop. Um, you get prior repair attempts. That that's the deal. Um, so if you were just to be like no prior repair attempts or no warranties on prior repair attempts, you'd be kind of screwed because everybody would send their stuff to the next guy that was crazy enough to warranty it. Me. <laughs> All right, so we are going to disconnect battery and hook it up to a power supply. One day I'm going to either buy or order or buy or create something to hook my power supply directly up to these phones that has something longer than a 12 inch cord on it. Gosh. All right, so we're on VBAT with uh, four volts. We got zero amps. I'm going to push the power button. 90 milliamps. 200 milliamps, 160. I see an Apple logo. This phone is booting without backlight. So far, this looks like legit no backlight. I probably should have let it boot all the way and verify that it had touch and stuff, but who has time for that? All right, so let's start tracking down this no backlight issue. First step for that is going to be microscope evaluation I'm not sure but I think I might see a component inside inside the connector let me see okay here's microscope we'll go straight at this connector hey there is a there is a component laying there look at this it's laying right on the LCD connector wow how in the hell was that even plugged in now I know some of you might be scratching your head going I seen where you stuck your tool in now I know what you're talking about if you get in right here and you go to pop this up, you're going to pop FL 2024, which is this component here that's missing. That's FL 2024. Pry damage happens very commonly right here. I know this, so I'm careful about it. I come in just above FL 2024, and that's where I take my pop. This thing has a backlight filter inside of the LCD connector. Now, somebody needs to inform Apple that this iPhone 6 is malfunctioning. The iPhone 6 was not designed to blow backlight filters. The iPhone 6 was designed to smoke everything else on the entire board and leave the filter intact. So what do you think the odds are of me being able to drop a backlight filter into this phone and fix it? Well, let's find out. Let's see. Now, see, this is also why I wind up offering different tiers of backlight repair. Because, like, if I really am able just to stick a filter there and go, I don't feel right about charging the full-blown price like I would if I'm going to wind up changing the, you know, the driver, the coil, the caps, and the diode. Um, I guess I could. You know, a lot of people would pay it, but anybody offering, like, a filter-only service will always beat your price, which that, that's okay, but... 
it's kind of hard to turn away these easy pr easy repairs even for the bottom end of my estimate you know so um, okay we have our power button hooked up we have our battery hooked up um, as you know on the iPhone 6 the backlight anode yeah I say anode and not anode um, it stays hot all the time with VCC main now it's not boosted you're not gonna get your 20 or 30 volts or whatever alright so I'm getting 3.65 can you see what I'm doing or is this sometimes I forget to focus the microscope for you guys so I'm getting 3.65 volts into that thing now it's possible for let's switch over to the schematic let me see if I can show you what I'm looking at it is possible to get that 3.65 volts there if the diodes blown but I don't think it's possible to get that there if the coils blown let me make sure I'm not stupid or stupider yeah, let's go with this one I wouldn't leave anything open here. What am I doing? Ah, gosh, so many things. Let's just skip down and we'll use plain English to find our circuit. All right, so we have D500 here, <clears throat> backlight driver. Okay, so if we have a blown diode, we won't see VCC main on backlight output, if, or VCC main level, and if we have a blown coil, we're not going to see VCC main on backlight output, right? That's what the schematic says. So being that I am getting current over here without this IC enabled either the IC is allowing that to, fl to flow through or I have a coil and diode that are both intact so let's give this the benefit of the doubt let's see if we can give this an easy repair because the schematic says in order for me to get 3.64 volts about the point at the screen which you could probably see too in order for me to get 3.6 whatever battery voltage here VCC main voltage um, that we must have a path from here to here which can either be this IC or it can be the coil through the diode um, I'm gonna say we've probably got everything intact um, because this although the filter does look a little burnt um, what I'm seeing here is pretty consistent with pry damage like it's been popped off the board so this has been a, a really really good customer they said they send some pretty rough stuff sometimes so I'm actually glad to see I'm glad to see this. Did I just switch to a micro pencil? Oh, I meant to switch tips. I <laughs> switched irons. One day I am going to upgrade or add a station so that I can quit switching irons. And I'd like to add some hot tweezers. Although I'm so hell bent on doing stuff with hot air, I think there's a lot of times I'm just going to be way more comfortable with tweezers, anyways. I mean, hot air, anyways. I have a hard time adjusting new tricks. Tweezers, yeah. Okay, let's do something very important to this board. So what I'm going to do right now, I'm going out here. If we look up PPLC, actually, FL2024. This is the filter that's blown. That's the component that's missing, FL2024. Um, well, <laughs> it's not missing. It was laying inside of the LCD connector. Perfect place for it so it can reshort something. Remove the fuse and jab it into the LCD connector. Those people would have never known this because normal people, they don't look for things this small. <laughs> All right, let me get you back to the microscope. I just added some flux where FL2024 is supposed to be. Kind of ironic that it wound up inside of the connector. Oh, it's been off there for a minute. This seems a little oxidized. What, did they get liquid there? Huh. All right. Well, I'm not getting what I would expect to get with my solder. Let me put a little bit of leaded down here. Put it in the hole. Okay. 
I apologize that that looks like crap, but it's extremely difficult to get a focused image through Flux. A tiny bit more. I'm actually going to be cleaning this up with alcohol since I'm not removing the board. I'm not ultrasonic cleaning it. So I want to use the tiniest amount of flux that I can to eliminate my cleaning time. All right, so we got a couple of pads that are fluffed up. Let me grab an iPhone backlight coil. I mean backlight filter. Filter, coil. It's all the same thing. It just depends on how you use it in the circuit. I use backlight filters as fuses. Like if I'm going to run a jumper <clears throat> for backlights, <laughs> mainly, I put a uh, backlight filter at the beginning of my jumper, and I do that in case my jumper that's typically carrying battery voltage, if it ever gets shorted out, it falls back on my little backlight filter that I installed as a fuse, and it actually works. Oh, shit, I dropped it. You know I'll never find that. That's gone. Hopefully I didn't drop it inside the phone. How come every time I do a video I lose something? Alright. You know FL 2024 is starting to feel a little bigger than that. I wonder, um, wonder if I'm pulling out the wrong component. Let's see. Nope, that's it. Backlight filter. Need to get my parts more organized. This is sort of a joke going through stuff like this. Okay, since I'm going to sit this on here with hot air, I am going to grab a piece of metal to use as a shield. I'm not going to use that future shield I created and removed. And what I'm doing now so that I can do this safely inside the housing. I'm going to slide a piece of metal between the power button flex and the PCB, right there. Which is probably not entirely necessary. Um, now I'm going to take a piece of Kapton here and put it over some other, gra other crap. <clears throat> I'm going to go ahead and cover up the camera connector and um, actually the LCD connector too. Sometimes I'll just lay a piece over it and then cut a hole out, but man, I typically would not even shield this. This just makes it a little easier so I don't have to be as careful today. And I'm still going to be damn careful because I'm not going to melt the components around it. I'm only going to melt the solder that's under that filter. Um, that's why I was so persistent about switching it over to leaded because it's going to melt a little bit faster. So let's start warming the area up here after I cover up the battery. I always lay an iPhone 5 shield over the battery like that. I don't know, something about Kapton tape, it just doesn't make me feel like it's going to keep things from getting burnt. Especially things that could possibly be explosive. I don't know what kind of heat these batteries will take, but I have sure tortured the hell out of them without them catching on fire. Alright, start warming things up slowly so my filter doesn't blow away. Almost there. We're there. I'm going to do that once more. I think my joint looks a little grainy. Yeah, we're there. Okay. So we did that without popping out beads all over the place. We just installed us a new filter. And I did that without taking the board out or anything else. So that really is a, a quick fix, if that'll fix it. So let's let this dude start cooling down, remove all of our tape. How about that? No backlight, and the filter was actually inside the LCD connector. <laughs> well, here's your problem. All right. That's my drawer that's iPhone 6 backlight drawer. <laughs> like every component to fix backlights in that one drawer, which I use for all kinds of crap. I don't use that stuff just for backlight. Okay, we're going to go ahead and test and see if this works.
Now, I did make a uh, critical mistake there. I actually did that with the battery connected just now. So, let's check and see if I screwed anything up right off the bat. See, that's another reason why making videos can be tough. Okay, we're at 0.28 volts, 0.27 volts. I did actually screw it up. And then I found our other filter over here. Now that might also... Wait, the battery's disconnected now. Oh, I'm terrible. I'm so screwed up today. Okay, so let's reconnect the battery. And now let's check and see if we've got voltage on our backlight circuit output here. There we go. So no harm done. I did only tin the pads on this filter between here and here, which you can't create a short from here to here. But if I would have screwed up and shorted between here and there, my ass would have been unsoldering the, the shield and redoing the rest of this backlight circuit. So let's see if we get backlight. Let's see if we get full backlight. Let's see if we can make any more really, really dumb mistakes in a video that I'm going to show everybody. Test screen can't believe I put that filter in with the battery connected. Not a big deal as long as you don't short it. Like, There's no other path to ground here other than right there at my spot. So as long as I didn't short um, VCC main side of that or backlight anode side of that to ground we would be good. Let's go ahead and just connect up a charger here because it did say 3.6. We have backlight. So this was just tool damage and that actually left the um, actually left the filter inside the connector so that was awfully generous I was a li little concerned about how rusty and nasty it looked though the filter wasn't just like one that had been popped off the board it looked water damaged only there's no sign of liquid damage anywhere in this whole phone I'm gonna be leaving that mistake in there folks me doing board level rework on this thing with the battery connected specifically on a line that's connected you know, in the long haul, directly to VCC main. All right, so the last thing I'm going to do to this phone is I'm going to make sure it will charge the battery, even though it came in for a backlight issue. Um, I'm going to go ahead and adjust brightness, and being that this thing will go full bright, I know that our coil's intact and our diode's intact, so um, that's going to be it for this repair. I hope it's not too cut up. I am going to be leaving the mistakes in there because once in a while, especially when you're distracted, you can forget something like that, so... Um, not too bad though. I didn't do anything bad. If I had screwed it up, I'd have been sitting here fixing it. So that's it for this video. I hope you all have successful repairs and I really thank you for watching. Have a good day, everybody.